I'm standing in the Science Museum, the home of innovation, and also, in effect, the home of my favourite element. Just over there is an instrument used by Norman Lockyer, the guy who set up the museum, to study the light from our local fusion reactor, the Sun. And he found a spectral signature that suggested that there was more to the Sun than just hydrogen. And he decided to call this thing Helium after Helios, the Sun God. Now this element is very rare on Earth, so it's interesting that he found it on the Sun, not on Earth at all. And it's also the stuff that we're all familiar with in this cheesy old party trick. So excuse me while I suck on this balloon. Now my voice is going to go up because the speed of sound in helium is three times that of air. I should say it's really not a good idea to do this for two reasons. One reason is that helium is an asphyxiant. My body doesn't get any oxygen when I breathe it in. The second reason is it's very rare. It's made deep underground when radioactive things like uranium decay goes into the atmosphere, bleeds off into space. So there's not much of it around and it's incredibly useful. We use it in airships. We use it in special, special breathing gases for divers and for newborn babies. And most interesting of all, when you cool it, cool it, cool it down, when it becomes liquid, it's near absolute zero. It's really useful for creating superconducting magnets, notably for brain scanners and things like that. So the next time you see a helium balloon, just remember the fact that an American Nobel laureate said that balloon should really be worth about $100 just to make us value this precious resource. And if there's one thing I want you to take away from this, it's to love and cherish your helium.